please give me your attention because at the end, before the fire alarm, we were pretty quick. So we are going to repeat the things that we did before again and again and again and again because it's important. So the first thing that I have to teach you before we uh, understand everything else is what an interface is in TypeScript. So we are back from uh, doing mode into understanding mode. So please just take a look at what I do and try to understand what I tell you. Quick question. From your prior knowledge in C++, in Java, in C Sharp, what is an interface? We discussed what a class is. Now I ask you what an interface is. Yeah. I would say it tells me some... Well, it's a blueprint for things I can do, for things mm -hmm. I'm able to. We use the word blueprint for classes. Yeah. But interface has to be something different, right? Mm -hmm. uh, functionality? No, class? interface does not provide functionality. An interface is, is definitely no functionality. Only a class can provide functionality. Some people describe interfaces as a kind of contract between two parties where the interface defines what all the classes that implement this interface offer as functionality at least. So what, what does that mean? Think of a car. A car has a brake and an accelerator, right? And this is an interface. I can say we have a car interface. It has a brake, an accelerator, and let's say a steering wheel. This is what you learn when you make your driver's license. And then you can sit in any car that has a brake, an accelerator, and a steering wheel. That does not mean that a car only consists of a brake, an accelerator, and a steering wheel. It just says we have a clear interface, a kind of contract what a car needs in order to be driven, and that is the interface. <coughs> Technically speaking, it's a partial definition of a type. So it's a definition of what a type can do, but the type can do more, like that, more than that, but it can do at least that. Let me show you what that means. Let's define a very simple interface. Let's call it um, I person. Some people use I in front of interfaces and I will do that now. Just a word of warning, Angular doesn't do that. So Angular interfaces don't have the I at the beginning. But for now, it's easier to, to clarify what is an interface and what is a class. So I use this here. But you don't need to do it. If you in your code, you enjoy using the I in front of an interface, that's perfectly fine. Okay, you, you can do that if you want. Uh, let's say a person must have a first name, which is ah, first name, which is string, and a last name, which is also string. Now I can implement a class person, and I can say this class implements the I person interface. And if I do that, I get an error. Why? Because the class does not implement or does not have a first name and a last name, right? So what we can do is we can say, hey, we have a uh, first name, which is a string, and a last name, which is a string, and we can have a constructor with a first name, string, and a last name, string, and guess what we do? We assign this dot first name equals to first name, and this dot last name, last name, equals to last name. Now it's okay, because now we have last name and first name. And by the way, we are going to use the opportunity to introduce a new feature in TypeScript. You will love it. Take a look, it's so awesome. I love it so much. You can simply delete these two lines, delete them. You can delete these two lines, delete them, and simply write here, public, and write here, public, and everything is fine. Isn't that awesome? If you just write public or private here, then these constructor parameters will automatically become fields in the class. Nice, right? I want to have that in C Sharp and other programming languages too, but TypeScript invented it and it works like a charm. Good. And it's now fine because it implements iPerson. Now if I extend iPerson, something like get full name, this is a method, I get an error. 
because now the person does not implement the full interface. So here I have now to implement get full name here, this one, and I have to return, for instance, something like this. Um, let's add the this.lastname and this.firstname. Please note that it is perfectly fine for the person to offer more than the interface. It's perfectly fine to say a person additionally has an age. Let's say the default age is zero. A person can have additional functions to something. Something like this. That's perfectly fine. That is not a problem. At least the things that are in the interface has to be present. This is existing knowledge and you should know that from Java, from C Sharp, from C++. Can you remember that at least a little bit from previous years? Okay. And now comes the difference in TypeScript. Yes, you have a question. You already define a body for the get full name in the iPerson interface? No, no, you cannot define the implementation here. This is just a contract. Now, do you want to know the reason? If we take a look at JavaScript, can you find on the right hand side the interface? Exactly. Because the interface is a pure type. Type script. It's a pure type. TypeScript is converted to JavaScript. JavaScript doesn't have the type information like an interface. Therefore, the interface doesn't exist at runtime. At runtime, there is no interface. So how could you add behavior functionality to an interface if the interface disappears? Poof, gone. Okay. It is possible in other languages. In C Sharp, you can add functionality to an interface, but in, in TypeScript, at least not in this way. Okay, but now comes the very, very big difference in JavaScript. Guess what? I can comment out this class here and the interface is still usable. Can you tell me a way in C Sharp or Java how to create an instance of an interface? Can I say new interface in Java or C Sharp? No, not possible, no way, never. That's not possible. It's like I tell you, because of the fact that a car has an accelerator and brake and a steering wheel, create a car from that. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to say that even, because a car is so much more than just the concept of a brake and accelerator and a steering wheel. It doesn't make sense. In JavaScript it does, in TypeScript it does, because we can do the following thing. We can say, let P, and now take a look what I do colon i person, I now say p is an interface and I can now use a plain object without a class. So what I have to do now is I have to, uh, let me get rid of this get full name because that makes it just complicated. First name is foo and last name is bar and that is very very unique to TypeScript. We can create an, in, an instance of an interface. That is not possible in C Sharp. That is not possible in JavaScript, but in, sorry, in Java. But it is possible in TypeScript. So we take an interface and we simply create an object from that interface. And that is very, very, very common in TypeScript. Whenever you have a so-called DTO, data transfer object, have you ever heard that term? Did you use that term in other programming courses? I guess you did, right? Okay, anybody else in other programming classes? No, never? Okay, you will hear that from me also in C Sharp. A DTO is simply um, a structured data type that stores a little bit of information. No behavior, no complex functionality, just data. That is a data transfer object. And if I have a data object which doesn't, which doesn't have functions but simply data in it, then you use in TypeScript typically an interface for that. Many beginners would create a class for that just to store first name and last name in it. And I want you not to do, like, to do it like that. I want you in TypeScript, if you have just data that you need to store somewhere, use an interface, not a class. 
use a class if you want to add functions. But if you just have data, no class, interface. That's very different from other programming languages. Question. Why exactly do we need to do that? Because it's more efficient. Okay. It's way more efficient. A class in JavaScript is much heavier yep. than an interface. Sure. Yeah, it's inefficient if you do that. And it's, um, have you ever heard the term idiomatic? No, no? never heard. Um, programmers often speak about idiomatic TypeScript code or idiomatic Go code or idiomatic C sharp code. What they mean is code that is typical for the language. Idiomatic TypeScript means that we write code as the people who invented TypeScript intended it to be written. And that is a, uh, sometimes it, that will happen with you. you. You have, in one day you have a Java lesson and then I ask you to write TypeScript and suddenly you write TypeScript code like you would write Java code. That is not idiomatic code. And as good developers, we try to write idiomatic code in each language that we use. <coughs> in this school, you learn a lot of languages. In practice, you will very likely work with only a few languages because it's really hard to master many languages. It's really hard. I write code in four languages and it's really hard to keep up to date in four languages. I ignore Java, I ignore Kotlin. They are super interesting languages, but I don't have the time. You learn many languages, but later on you will learn fewer languages in more details and then you will write idiomatic code. So back to our example, I'm talking way too much. Um, you see, this is a DTO interface, board cell, consisting of player name, and class. See that? And when I want to fill this thing, I simply say, whoops, here, result co uh, row call, that is a board cell, and then I create the object, see, with a player name and the class. Here I apply the concept of the interface in Angular. And by doing that, I can access the player name here in HTML. And by doing that, I can access the class here in HTML. Got it? I will show you a simpler sample after the break so you really understand what's going on. But at the end of the day, this is how we solve our level three. If we make, by the way, a mistake, Angular will tell us. So Angular really checks all the property names and things like that. You will not be able to make a mistake here. Question. You ah, I see. I, I thought you know that um, in, in JavaScript. This is just how you add uh, an, an element to an array. So if you have, for instance, let numbers uh, equals to one, two, and you want to add three, you can say push, sorry, numbers, push three. And in our case here, we have an array consisting of arrays, two-dimensional arrays. So what we do is we push here the second dimension of the array and here we simply assign the value. In JavaScript you have the possibility to say push 3 or the other option, I told you that already, I will repeat it now, the other option is to simply say this. That's the same. That's index 0, that's index 1. And then I can either call push, which will, which will just add it at the end, or I can say something like that. It's the same. It's really the same. This, this line here, yeah. is the first dimension. Yeah. This adds the array inside of the array. I can show you that in level two. You didn't ask me this question when we wrote this code. See? Mm -hmm. This is the outer array. And these are the inside arrays, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So let's check that with the level three. This here, this here, line 34, yeah, is array. this. Mm. This push here is adding this one. And this assignment here is adding the values to the inner array. Mm -hmm. okay. Does it make sense? Yeah, sure. And then we add the next array 
and then we add elements to this array, and then we add the next array, and then we add elements to the array. This is what this loop does. You will have to practice that in your Connect4 exercise. <laughs> Maybe you will struggle with it, and then we'll take a closer look at, um, at your problems in that area. If we take a look at the HTML, we need a for loop for the outer array and a for loop for the inner array. The inner array references the outer array. See that one? <coughs> Please tell me if it's not clear. Does it make sense? You will have to practice it, and therefore you have the Connect4 exercise. There you have to do all these levels. It's exactly the same. Until next week, I want you to implement level two. And guess what your homework will be the week after? Implement Connect4 with level three. So you will have to practice that. Good, very good. So with that, we have finished level three. That's good. I think we should now make a break.